good morning, good morning. We're so happy to be with you this morning, and we're praying it all as well. This morning, uh, we have another little unusual message. Never preached this one before. Uh, I'm going to give us what the Lord gives me. I pray that the antennas are up this morning and that you will receive it. I pray that God will instruct you what to do, when to do, and how to do it with this message. For those of you who have been following us on, Monday, on uh, Sunday and on Wednesday, we'll still be coming to you again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to have some other preachers that's going to be involved with the preaching and the teaching. So we encourage you to tune in to us. Give us your so spiritual, financial support so we can continue on doing the work of this Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you afresh for all that you've done, for that you continue to do for us in spite of us, how you bless us continually over and over. We've come to realize, O oh God, that there is no other God like you. First of all, in love. You love us so much, you give your only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for us. And then there's compassion, oh God. Even when we fell, fell, fell short, oh Lord, you didn't turn your back on us. You picked us up and you nurtured us where we needed to be nurtured, oh God. We come this morning thanking you for your only begotten Son, Jesus, who you give to us to die in our place that we can live eternally with you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, who we yield to right now as the master teacher, who leads and guides us and comforts us, oh God, and bring back to our remembrance all the things that we have studied and learned, oh God. We ask you enable us to follow him this morning, oh God, that we can bring glory, praise, and honor to your name. We pray for the listening audience, oh God, that they will receive the message with gladness and clarity and understanding. We do all things to your glory, your praise, and your honor. Again, as we've come to learn to pray, let what we do glorify you, edify the body of Christ, and terrify Satan. Have nine on the way, O oh God. Bless others who are on the air also who are delivering your message to your people in this time. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Have nine on the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to start off in this fashion this morning. I want to start off this morning in this fashion. There was a, a commercial by a wireless telephone company, and I know the name of the company, but I'm not going to patronize them and honor them in that space. You will probably re remember and recognize who I'm referring to anyway. Uh, this person who was in uh, this commercial he would walk around the various places now where a phone would normally not work. And each time he would go to another place, he got further and further away from the connection, his main connection, his main source of power. And he asked the question, can you hear me now? Then he moved on a little further, he said, can you hear me now? Then he went to some remote places, he said, can you hear me now? Well, this commercial parallels with our lives. What do you mean, Pastor? It reminds us that sin has caused us to be separated further and further from God our Father, which is our main connection. The more we sin, the further we get from God. It appears that Sometimes we can no longer hear him when he speaks to us. I believe that is taking place right now. We're really not hearing what God is saying to us. We, he's not going to, we're not going to be able to hear him until we stop doing the things that are contrary to his will. Only then, only then 
when we put up our antennas and begin to listen and adhere to what he has been saying to us, when God brings or allows those hardships because of our sin that separate us from him, when he allows this to come up to uh, come upon us, he seems to be saying to us, it appears that y'all have a problem hearing me. So God said, look, yeah, it appears that y'all have a problem hearing me when I'm speaking to you. Well, this morning, I want to speak to us from the subject. God is saying, can you hear me now? Give it a chance to develop. It's going to develop. I'm going to introduce a passage of scripture. But I'm not going to exegete that scripture entirely. I will say something briefly about that passage of scripture that I'm going to introduce. But I'm going to use it as a springboard to talk about what I really want to talk about in this message. I want to talk to us this morning from a, a response by a very familiar person, not him, but his daughter, Dr. Billy Graham. When you call that household name, everybody knows about him. Dr. Billy Graham's daughter name was Annie, Annie Graham. She was interviewed by Jan Clayson. This was on the CBS Early Morning News Show. And this happened sometime after, and it wasn't too long after the horrific hurricane uh, Katrina that told up uh, New Orleans. And it happened even before that, this interview. It happened right after 9-1-1. So the interview of Jane Clayson is going to start off an interview by asking that question about 911. Jane Clawson, Clayson, she started off by asking a question. Before I ask that question, let me give this one passage of scripture that I wanted to read. We're not going to expound on it much, but it will tie in to our message. Turn with me if you have, can to Revelation, the second chapter, verse 7. Now what I'm about to read to us is also found in Revelation 3 and 6. It's also found in Revelation 3 and 13. And it's also found in Revelation 3 and 22. They say it's identically the same thing. I will only read one. Okay? I'm going to read Revelation 2 and 7. Now remember, remind, remember now, I'm not going to deal much with that passage. I want to deal with the interview. Here's what Jesus said. And he was talking to the seven churches. In Asia Minor, he said, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Well, what does that mean? And this is all the exegeting I'm going to do on that. This means that those who accept the message of the Holy Spirit, they promise something. They are promised the inheritance of salvation and salvation blessing. That's all that is. If you have an ear, and if you receive what the Holy Spirit is saying, you will be blessed. If you have an ear, let them hear. So I want to talk about hearing this morning. Hearing. With the subject that, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Here's how it began. Dan Clayson asked her, Annie Graham, and the world will do this sometime to us, try to put us in an awkward position. She asked Annie Graham, she said, how could God, all 
omnipotent, all-powerful, all-loving God, all protector of the people, how can he allow something like this to happen? Now, what, was she, what did she have reference to? She was talking about 9-1-1. How could Almighty God allow that to happen to his people? Who supposedly to be a Christian nation, United States of America? We need to pay close attention to how Annie Graham responds to this question. Now remember, what you will be hearing is a lot of Annie Graham. Certainly, I will put the comments that God gave me to add to what she said, but I will let you know Annie Graham said this, Annie Graham said this, and I'll let you know that I added this to what she said. Here's what Annie Graham did. And again, she, she, she give an extremely profound and insightful response. What did she say, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. She said, I believe that God is deeply sad. He is sad, real sad, by this. By this 911. He said, just as we are, we are sad might also. But for years, God has been saying, get, we have been telling God, rather, get out of our school. We've been telling God, get out of our government. We've been telling God, get out of our lives. And being the gentleman that he is, has reference to God now, he said, okay. I believe he calmly backed out out of our lives. He said, okay, you don't want me? I won't stay anywhere where I'm not going or desire. He said, how can you expect God, this is Andy speaking now, to give us his blessing and his protection if we demand he leave us alone? Leave us alone. But now we want him to protect us? Well, Annie Graham continued. She said, now in light of the recent events, terrorist attack, school shooting, et cetera, she said, I think it all started when Madeline Murray O'Hare, by the way, she was killed and a body was just recently found now. That that she had made way back right after 9-1-1. It all started with her, Annie Graham said. O'Hara didn't want prayers in the school. And guess what? We said, okay, we'll take the prayers out of the school. So we took prayers out of the school. And when we took prayers out of the school, demon, drug, death, and destruction took over the schools. Romans 1 and 28 says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yeah, God turned us over to ourselves to do those things that are not convenient. Some of the things that I just left, I just mentioned. God is saying, by allowing us to turn, by turning us over to ourselves and going through all type of destruction and adversity, God is saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, Annie Graham goes on and she said, when someone said, you better not read the Bible in school, now we know that the Bible said thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not uh, uh, have uh, hatred. He said thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We knew all of that. But when somebody said take the Bible a reading out of school, we said okay, okay. Now it's incredible how murder, theft, and hatred increase in the school and in society when we could no longer read our quote from the Bible. And you know what makes it even worse? We could not even quote 
something, a passage of scripture, or even say amen, at commencement exercise. A nation that deal upon God, in God we trust, in the year of our Lord. One nation under God. But now, because somebody said we cannot read the Bible, we can't even quote from the Bible. But God said, okay, is this what you want? Then I'm going to let all kind of adversities come up on you in the church. And when he did, and we went through 911, God is actually saying to us, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, in addition, Annie Graham said, then Dr. Benjamin Spock, he said we shouldn't spank our children when they misbehave. My God, my God. He said, because their little personalities would be warped. And we might damage their self-esteem. How many of us know that Dr. Spock's son committed suicide? Now we say, an expert should know what he's talking about. So we said, okay, okay, Dr. Spock. We won't whip them. We won't spank them. We will give them time out. And when we put them in a little corner in the time out, it's an opportunity for Satan to mess with their little fragile mind. God said, if that's what you want, that's what you got. And guess what? When you go through these hardship, when you go through these adversities, I'm only allowing this to come up on you so I can get your attention. My question to you is, can you hear me? Now, can you hear me now? Because some of us are listening to man, Dr. Spock, instead of listening to God, this generation seems to be one of the worst generations that I've seen in my lifetime. Think about this. We treat our children with love. However, when they miss the mark and become disruptive, we allow them to experience our wrath to get their attention. If, if, if it didn't happen to you, I, I don't know what to say about it. I know there was a tolerant level in my family. David, don't do that. David, stop. I warn you. And guess what? After so many warnings, they got my attention. They got my attention. How many of us know this exactly what God is doing right now? through this coronavirus and pandemic, uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. He doesn't hate us. He's trying to get our attention by allowing all of us to come upon us. Can't you hear him saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, furthermore, Andy Graham said, when someone said, Teachers and principals better not discipline our children when they misbehave. Wow. Wow. Don't you touch my child. I don't care what they did. Don't you put your hand on my child. The school administrators went a little further. Here's what they said. No faculty member in no situation had better touch a student when they misbehave. He said, because we don't want any publicity, any adverse publicity. And surely, we don't want to be sued. You know, they sue you for anything. They'll sue the church today. And he said, there's a big difference between discipline, touching, beating, smacking, humiliate, and kick it. We can discipline them without of all of that, but to let them just run havoc in a mist and destroy the classroom, disrupt the teacher, they may not come to learn, but there are some parents who send their children to learn and the children wants to learn and desire to learn. But because of the principal and some administrators, we cannot discipline them. We have to let them have the army. One of the most ironic things that I have, I know a teacher 
was a sister principal, lost their job because they put their hand on the kid. The kid was swinging around, kicking everything like that. He grabbed the kid and put the kid against the wall. He said, you had no reason at all to put your hand on that child. Let it go. One kid punched the teacher in the stomach. The teacher had to be taken to the hospital in the ambulance. The next day, that kid was back in school. God said, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear what I'm saying to us, to you all? That's what God is saying. And when we say, okay, that's what our rule and revelation, our guideline, we cannot touch it, we can't do this. Okay. Satan was sitting back listening and gloating over it, waiting for that type of response. That's what he wanted to hear. But listen to what the Bible said. It started off in, 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 in Proverbs 22 and 15. He said, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it from him. And then if you go to Proverbs 13 and 24, it says, he that spared his rod hated his son, but he that loved him chastised him time, many times. And of course, we're all familiar with Proverbs 22 and 6. It says to us, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Maybe if we would discipline, and I mean train, our children at home, maybe, just maybe, they would not need discipline at the school. Not the drastic di discipline that the teachers have to administer. How many of us know that God is allowing the student to control the teachers rather than the teachers controlling the teacher, the, the student? In my humble opinion, this is the tail wagging the dog instead of the dog wagging the tail. I'm not calling any of them dogs, I'm just using that as an illustration. The tail is supposed to be wagged by the dog, not the dog, uh, uh, I mean, not, not, not the tail wagging the dog. The dog should be wagging the tail. The teacher should be disciplined and administrating rules to the student, not vice versa, not the, the student giving direction and wrecking havoc in the trade, I mean, the school to have their own way. Well, God allowed this. He allowed this to occur to do what? To get our attention. God is saying, can you hear me now? Let me just put another little spiritual kickstand right here, or put a spiritual kickstand right here. If this situation doesn't turn around, we already are on our way. We're going to lose more teachers than what we have lost. Teachers are becoming so frustrated, disgusted. They're retiring really before they want to retire. At one time, it was a privilege and an honor to go and deposit an into the kid. Right now, they talk to you as a dog. They curse you out loud, man, a uh, drunken sailor. And we can't do anything about it. God said, that's what you wanted. You told me to leave you alone? He said, so? Now, you reaping what you sow. Sin has come between us. And it happened so much and so bad and so fast. I'm wondering, can you hear me? Now, Andy Graham didn't stop that. Andy Graham said, then someone said, let our daughters have abortion. I don't know, this is Andy Graham now. If they want to, and they won't even have to tell their parents. Wow. Wow. That's what society is saying. That's what the legislation are passing rule. This is the kid's body. She don't have to tell her parents. She can have an abortion if she wants to, if she desires. Church, are you listening? Are you seeing what Satan is doing? Are you seeing what God is sending back and saying, this is what you want? I'm telling you over to yourself. I'm allowing destruction and habit to come into your life. Only 
to get your attention. Can you hear him say? Can you hear me now? And then some wise school board member said, well, since boys are going to be boys, and they're going to do it anyway, let's give all our sons condom. Remember, Andy said this now, not pastor. They want to, uh, to, 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 so they can do it anyway. They're going to do it anyway, so let's, let's, let's give them some type of protection. Now, what they had in mind, unfortunately, is we can prevent pregnancy if we give them birth control pills, if we give them condom. But they're missing it. They're missing a terrific point what God is trying to say to us. The only considering preventing pregnancy. They're not thinking about the will of God. Here's what we have reference for. We won't have to tell our parents. Then they got them all the condom that they want at school. And you know what we did? And we said, okay. We just sat back. Not exercising our work as parents, citizens. We just went along with what Satan was trying to bring about in our school. And we know what condition the schools are in. We still have good school teachers. I had three in my family, all our teachers. And I know how they dedicate themselves to being taught. But there's so many distractions that's going on because God has pulled back and said, you said okay. This is what you want. You got it. But he's saying, when you go through these adversities, don't come crying to me. He said, because I'm asking a question. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Here's what the apostle Paul said. Now, this is the position that he took. He said to the Corinthians, and you find this in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and the ninth verse. And you need to mark this down, underline this, and go back and read it again. He said, no fornicators shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what's a fornicator? Fornication has a broad meaning. But to narrow it down and for the sake of time, I just want to give you something that we already know. Fornication, and some have understood it to be only, but it's more than that. Sex outside of our marriage and sex before we get married. Now let's put it in proper perspective. What does the school board, what does the uh, elected official desire to do? They decide to let the children make the decision, and we decide to aid them in making that decision, providing the things that we need. Now, what we do? We protecting them from getting pregnant, but we also sinning of God against God. God says, "What you encouraging them to do is fornicate." And He said in First Corinthians six and nine, He said, "No fornicator shall inherit the kingdom." of God. Think about that. God said, okay, is this what you want? I'm just going to pull back and let you do what you want to do. But are you willing to pray the price? Each time we sin, just like this man, and I almost called that, tel that, that uh, telephone company. Well, let me call it Verizon. Get it out of the way. Each time he walked further and further from his man tower in some remote area, and he asked the question, can you hear me now? Each time we condone what the politician, some misguided school board and teachers do, we are saying, God is saying to us, can you hear me now? You see what's coming up. Now, Andy Graham was answering the question that was asked by Jan Clayton. Now, additionally, Andy Graham told a CBS News reporter, he said, then some of our top elected officials said, it doesn't matter what we do in private as long as we do our job. Agreeing with them, the majority
majority of, I don't know how to say the majority of many Christians, say, well, that's their personal business. It doesn't matter to me. The only thing that I'm interested in is that uh, they, I have a job and the economy is good. And this includes the president. I don't care what he does. Is that the attitude that God has? That God is taking? Do what you want. Do it how you want, as often as you want. Don't worry about sinning against God. That's their private business. But guess what? When the head goes wrong, it affects the whole body. And when the whole body is affected, we can't find ourselves in this array, in this order. And then we find ourselves in a calamitous situation. And then we ask God, Lord, help us. And God said, well, I turn you over to yourself. He said, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Sin, just like this commercial, has separated us. And you're getting further and further from me. But the question is, when I allow these things to come upon you to get your attention, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, look what it says in Leviticus 20 and 7. It says, Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. God is saying, I, 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 I'm not condoning all this activity that you're doing. He said, be like me, be you holy, for I'm holy, and I am your Lord, your God. Now in Matthew, here's what Jesus said. Matthew, the 16th chapter, in verse 26, Jesus said, for what is a man profit if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And he didn't put that in. I'll put that one in, okay? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? My brothers and sisters, don't compromise your faith or our faith for something that is temporary. I don't care what they do. I don't care if the president do it. That's their personal opinion. All I want is a job, and all I would desire is that the economy be sound. How many of us know that? We don't have to worry about what the president is doing. We don't have to know worry about what the economy is doing. When I say don't have to worry, I mean to the point that we are putting all our confidence in them and none in God. How many of us know that God is our source and our resource? We look to him for our need. Yes, it matters what they're doing. Yes, it matters what lifestyle they're living. Yes, it matters what example they're setting for our children. Right now, it's chaos on television. Even the, 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 the kids' program, we have to be uh, careful what we allow them to watch. Uh, Satan is a subtle enemy, and what he does, he tried to come in in a subtle way that we don't even recognize what he's doing. Two men kissing, two women kissing, two men looking and living together, and two women living together as husband and wife. And our children don't know the difference, so they think this is the norm. God said, I'm turning you over to yourself. He said, can you hear me now? Annie Graham said three final things, I'm gonna love them together. She told uh, Jane Clayson, he said, then some, 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 some people who, in the publishing business, who write magazines and stuff, uh, they printed magazines with the pictures of nude women, and they called it wholesome. Down to earth appreciation for the beauty of the female body, nudity. And what did we say? Okay, he has freedom of speech, he has the right, they can do that. Is this what God wanted? Is this what God was pleased with? Well, it didn't stop there. I said three things. And then someone else, they, they took their uh, appreciation step a little further. And they began to publish pictures of new children. And then further against by making them available on the internet. Now you got a law, you can't do that. 
But for a while, for a season, they were doing it. God turned us over to a reprobate mind. And we said, okay, they have that right. They can do what we what they want to do. And then someone else took the preacher step a little further and they published pictures of new children. And then further again, by making them available in the internet, we said again, okay, wasn't bad enough they were doing it with the adults, not doing it with the children. Why? They, they can tell to free speech. And they can do things like that. We're not living in Russia or China. We live in a free country. We are free to do what we want to do as long as our freedom don't infringe, infringe upon God's will and God's command. Now we ask ourselves, why our children have no conscience? Why they don't know no right from wrong? Why doesn't it bother them to kill strangers, their classmates, and themselves? Probably if we think about it, and think long enough, we're reaping what we sow. You can't sow briars and thorns and expect wheat and corn to grow. God's saying, when he allowed these conditions to exist and come upon us, our children become disobedient and disruptive and murderers and thieves, he said, I'm trying to get your attention. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, what's the conclusion to the whole matter? Let's get a word of Jesus in here. In John, the 10th chapter, verses 4 and 5, Jesus said, and when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Now, why does the sheep follow Christ? It answered that question. It said, for they know his voice. You remember I said we talking about hearing? Can you hear me now? Verse 5 said, and a stranger will they not follow. But they will flee from him. Instead of going along with the corrupt government, the corrupt school teaching the principle, we will flee from them and we will follow God. And Jesus said in the last part of that fifth verse, he said, for they know not the voice of the stranger. They are listening for the voice of Jesus and his help, our heavenly father. What's the appeal in this matter? My appeal to us is that pass this message on if you think it has merit. And if not, then just discard it. No one will know. Nobody's going to know you did. But if you discard this message and don't try to pass it on in the manner that it was given, don't sit back and complain about what bad shit the world is in. Why? Because we had an opportunity to do something about it. Remember what God is saying to us. Can you hear me now? What will it take for God to get we must do for God to get our attention. His Son, His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And our person God accepted Him. And it's easy to do. We say it to you every Sunday, every Wednesday, and every opportunity we have. All we have to do is say, Lord, I accept the atoning work that Jesus did for me on Calvary. I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. I invite him through the power of the Holy Spirit to come into my life and I need you to teach me from this moment forward how to live for him. If you do that and you pray and you believe, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved.
Now the next step is, don't just accept him. You get it in private. Find a church after God directs you. That's a Bible preaching, believing church. And place your discipleship there and begin to study and learn and work and lead others to Christ. God said, the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. He's just waiting for you to come forward. You don't know what calling God has on your life. You don't know how many needs you're going to meet. You don't know, you don't know how he's going to use you. But the first step is accepting his son Jesus as the Lord and Savior. If you do that, the Bible says, you're saved. You're saved. Well, we come down to the offering point. If you care to financial support the Great New Criminal Rock Baptist Church, we have several ways you can do it. You can use the title app on our Facebook page, or you can use check or money on it. If you use the check or money order, you have to make it out to the Greater New Plymouth Rock Baptist Church. Post Office Draw 502, Reserve, Louisiana, 70084. And don't forget to indicate where you like your giving to go. And we're going to do our best to make sure that there's a place where you ask us to place it. All right. I've given us what God gave us to me. I'm hoping and praying that we will realize that we're in the condition that we're in because of the choices that we have made. And when we make choices that are diametrically opposed to the will of God, God allows hardship to come upon us. Not because he hates us, but because he loves us. And when he allows these hardships to come upon us, adversity, He's really saying to us, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, God bless you. Looking forward to coming back again Sunday, but we got Bible class and Sunday school, and also we will be having intercessory prayer pretty soon. I want to start announcing those, and we certainly invite you to join in with those also. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for all that has been said and done. We bless your name. Give this, this message laid, O oh God. Let them play it over and replay it and replay, O oh God, until it's sent into our inner spirit, O oh God. And that we can share and tell others. You are displeased with us, O oh God, by our actions. And you allow these things to come upon us, O oh God, to get our attention. The question is, can we hear you now? Now have thine own way. We bless your holy name. Until we can meet again, O oh God, in one man of Christian love. Keep us, O oh God, in your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.